morning, everyone. Uh, we're here to talk about the Windows Update architecture, um, more specifically WSS. But before that, let me just introduce ourselves uh, briefly. Here's Yves. Uh, he works for the French National Security Agency. He works uh, as a security auditor for more than 10 years now. And I'm Roman. Uh, I was a security auditor, but I'm now a, a developer in a small company and dealing with Active Directory uh, security issues. Before talking about the uh, WSS itself, I, I'll introduce you to a problem, a scenario that we encountered sometimes uh, during our pen tests. So that's you waiting to compromise a network, the network, and somehow you get you get a foothold inside this network. It can be uh, by f phishing or or. Uh, Compromising a uh, JBoss server, or Tomcat, uh, Oracle with default credential, and as anyone say, uh, sorry, as anyone knows, when you uh, compromise uh, this uh, kind of server, it runs with system privileges because you have to. It doesn't work uh, otherwise. So you pilfer the credentials on this server. You manage to do some lateral movements, and I'm, at some point, you just realize that. Everything you have, uh, you're blocked. You can't go uh, more in, in the network. But by looking at the uh, information, the data that you uh, get on these servers, you realize that there's another network, a disconnected one, next to the one you're trying to compromise. The problem here is that you don't have any more credentials to get more into the network. So you're basically screwed. But when you look at the servers you've compromised, there's a WSS server. And the question we are going to talk about in this talk is that what if you can use this WSS server to compromise its clients and more specifically, the domain controllers that are clients to the WSS server. And to answer this question, we need to understand a little bit of uh, WSS architecture. So here you have a WSS server inside the enterprise network, which is synchronizing its updates with Microsoft Updates uh, servers. And this synchroni synchronization is done in two steps. The first step is to synchronize the metadata on an HTTPS secret channel. And the second one is to uh, synchronize the binaries associated with this metadata on an HTTP, on an HTTP sorry, channel this time. This can be a problem, but actually isn't because of the signature that any binary needs to have. Uh, we're talking about authenticated signature here. So no one can actually tamper with the binary, even if the uh, channel is not secured by TLS. The, in the metadata, you have anything uh, relating to the updates themselves, uh, including the uh, MS uh, Microsoft bu bulletin number, uh, the description of the updates, uh, whatever the information. And uh, the binaries can be anything from a PSF file, a cabinet file, or uh, more interesting for us, an executable file. The executable file has a particularity uh, because they, it can take common line arguments, and the common line arguments are provided into the metadata, which aren't signed. We'll see uh, why this is important later. Then inside the enterprise network, you have WSS clients. It can be workstation, it can be servers, uh, from a filer to a domain controller that regularly synchronizes with their updates with the WSS server. They do it by default on an HTTP channel. Microsoft is really pushing forward to administrators to enable TLS, but it's not really often the case. The updates are obviously applied with full system privileges, because if you need to replace a critical uh, part of, the, of your system, well, you need to have full system privileges to do that. In more complicated network, you have what Microsoft calls uh, upstream and downstream servers. Think of a worldwide company with uh, 
an internet access and uh, uh, one policy to manage updates. It, you can chain servers and the updates will follow the, the chain. And if you have even more complicated networks, with disconnected ones, for example, well, Microsoft is providing a, a tool to export updates from a WS server to an external uh, disconnected WS server. So that's a um, quick overview of the uh, WSS architecture. We're going to talk about now the start of the art, state of the art of the attack on WSS, and it's going to be pretty quick because uh, there's only one attack that has been presented at Black Hat USA two years ago now. It's called WSS Spect. And the idea of the attack is to get a man, man in the middle position between the WSS clients and a WSS server to intercept the answer of the server inject a fake update into the metadata stream because it's on HTTP channel inside the enterprise network and the metadata unsigned. And the clients then apply these new updates with system privileges and that's how you get uh, control of the WSS clients. This really uh, is an awesome attack because it's the first on the Microsoft update architecture but it has some limitation. The first one is that you need to get a man in the middle position, meaning that there's no network limitation in place, such as private VLAN, uh, for example. And the second limitation is that you need to get a useful one. So here I presented you a not TLS enabled network, but sometimes administrators do their job and secure these uh, streams. In our case, it, uh, it's difficult to put in place inside the network, uh, the internet connecting network, but it definitely uh, can't be uh, used in, for the disconnected one. So we developed our own tool, which is called WSS Pandu and is freely available on GitHub. The idea of the tool is not to have uh, network uh, limitations, but if you have compromised a WC server, you can inject metadata into the database and uh, use the signed binary, we'll talk about that later, uh, inside this WC server. And when the client will download this update, it will see a new update and it will download this, uh, the binary uh, related to this update. The first thing a client uh, does when it downloads a binary is to check if the binary is signed by Microsoft. So you have to have a signed binary which can execute arbitrary commands. So the, mo the two most known binaries are uh, psexec and bginfo. They, are, they were presented uh, with WSuspect attack. But actually you can find other binaries if you look at the app locker bypass projects such as the one with uh, sub T. So you, you can use, for example, MS Build or Install Util, which are two other binaries which are signed by Microsoft, and that take command line arguments that execute arbitrary commands. So you have in the metadata command line arguments, the binary is signed, that's how you get the control of the, the WSUS client. Okay, so we have some video to demonstrate what could be done with a uh, W suspendu. Okay, in the scenario, we have compromised a bunch of servers, but we don't have compromised the domain controllers. So we can use some servers to try to compromise the domain controllers. And among the control servers, among the um, servers we have compromised, there are WSUS servers. So we try to inject an update, a malicious update, to control all the clients. Here we are on a WSUS client. We have absolutely no privilege and no, <coughs> no account on these uh, servers. We can verify and only the administrator account is present. The aim of the attack is to add the new users on this, uh, on this uh, computer. So as we have compromised the WC servers, we copy the binary, WC and a payload, PSXEC in this case, 
and the servers and we want to launch we want to launch an injection so we <coughs> launch the injection of the payload that's exact in this case and with some arguments to add a new user so we launch a command to add a specific user with a specific password and while the update will be installed with system privileges we take advantage of this to add the user in the local group uh, administrator local group the last things we have to precise we can precise is the computer name of the targeted computer by precising it we can automatically approve the update for this computer we can check in the mmc console and after refreshing we can see everything is okay the update is present and is approved for one computer among the four declared in the wc server okay we go we go back to the client and we have to write the client check if a new update is available we can force it by clicking on check for updates and if uh, an update is present the system download it install it with system privileges and the update will be installed that it so we can check now the user lists and we can see the new user is present and the user is a member of the administrator local group so <laughs> mission succeeded okay we have compromised the connected network we have uh, compromised all the uh, connected network but we want to have a more intrusion in this uh, the network we have seen that a new <coughs> another network is uh, present but this network is not connected to the current network nor to the internet so we want to inject and um, an update in the WSUS server present in the connected network and we want to wait that an administrator uh, transfer the update to keep up to, the, up to date the, um, the disconnected network so as we have compromised again the WSUS servers in the connected network we can launch the script we can copy the W suspendu to perform an injection and this time we want to launch psexec but the argument of psexec is not to add a new user because it's not relevant to a disconnected network but we want to launch a powershell and the argument of the powershell is an uncoded payload we'll see later what is this payload this time we can't precise the, compu the targeted computer because no uh, computer of the disconnected, ne disconnected network is, pre is uh, known in this WC servers. Okay, the update is injected. We can see it in the MMC console again. And um, everything is okay. Now we have to wait that a legitimate administrator has to uh, perform his work to transfer the updates to keep up to date the disconnected network. To that, the administrator is connected on the uh, WC server located in the connected network. It um, <coughs> administrator transfers the update, the update binary, and launches the WC util tools provided by Microsoft to export the metadata from the database to an external device. After transfer the device and the discontinuity network, you can import the updates. So, to do that, you copy the WSUS content directory in the disconnected network and launch again WSUS util to import metadata into the database. Now we can see the updates in the WSUS servers located in the disconnected network. We can see some information like the classification, the Security, the um, update as a security update classification. We can see some other information like the Microsoft Bulletin, MS 1710. The bulletin describes the vulnerability exploited by WannaCry. And the description is set. All this information are um, 
controlled by the metadata, so by the WSUS uh, pendu. Now, <coughs> the behavior of the WSU servers depend of the configuration of the servers. If we check in the option, we can see that a default automatic approval rule is set. This option is active, is, uh, is present by default, but not active by default. In this case, the administrator just enable it. This rule says that if we are in case of security updates classification, the update will be automatically approved. So if uh, it's not uh, it's, uh, the case here, so the uh, update will be approved for all the computers. Now we go on a victim. A victim is, is a computer in the um, disconnected network, and we have to wait the victim search if a new update is available. We can force it again by click and check for updates, and normally the update will be uh, will arrived, installed with system privileges, and if everything is okay, something <laughs> will be open. Okay. Remember that the administrator just want just to update the, the disconnected network to protect again some ransomware, as example, and after doing it, we can see the effect is a little bit different. As attacker, we just have to wait for money now. Okay, so we have compromised the connected network. We have uh, managed to transfer an update, malicious update to the disconnected network, and we have compromised the disconnected network. Okay, in conclusion, we can see that if we have uh, WSU servers in, uh, <laughs> if we have uh, WSU servers in uh, the network, we have control relationship from the WSU servers to all these clients. So we need to be careful about the positioning of these WSU servers. When you design a new architecture, we uh, we have to uh, think about the WSU servers. Thanks for your attention.